بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم continuing on in our درس in, in basic fiqh from the book Umd al-Tahkam we reached uh, we're still in Tahara and we have reached the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam which I have uh, taught many times and will just very, be very brief and hopefully review some of the benefits and for those who have not uh, studied this hadith before then we'll try we'll also be brief but hopefully giving us what is sufficient to know how to practice this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which is Aleem because this is a very incredibly important hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as all the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam are important but this hadith gives us a very important uh, principle in the Sharia uh, uh, Qaida Fiqiyya and the Qaida Fiqiyya that is found in this principle is Al Yaqeen La Yazul Yaqeen Bishak or Al Yaqeen la yuzul bi shak, and then there's uh, other ways of pronouncing, it. and there's other qaida or qawaid that uh, fa fall under this principle. But we're just going to try to gain something very basic, so that way we have an understanding and we can practice this bi idnillah taala. So, uh, and and that that qaida it means that al yaqeen la yuzul bi shak. Meaning that when something, when you're certain of something, certainty is not removed by doubtfulness. And we're going to talk about how that's, what's that going to mean for us in the Sharia and when we're practicing. What does that mean for us? Al Yaqeen la Yuzul bi Shak, or that uh, that certainty is not removed by doubtfulness. So the Hadith with this Qaida comes from is a hadith on, on, Abad, on Abad ibn Tamim, on Abdullah ibn Zayd ibn Asim al-Mazini. Qala shukiya la nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rajulun yukhailu ilayhi anuhu yajidu shayfi salah. Faqal la yansaraf hatta yasma'a sawtan o yajida rihan ruahu Bukhari wa Muslim. Abad ibn Tamim narrated on, on uh, Abdullah ibn Zayd ibn Asim al-Mazini Rahimahumullah ta'ala, radiyallahu ta'ala anhum May Allah be pleased with all the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Tabi'een May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon them and, and he said that a man Shukri ila Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rajulu Yukhailu ilayhi anuhu yajida shay'a fi salat That a man came and complained to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam That he found something that he uh, He noticed something during his prayer So he had doubtful, he, he was doubtful about his salat Whether it was sound or not And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his beautiful manners and his beautiful way of preaching and his beautiful example Alayhi Salatu Wasalam showed us how to deal with this and gave us a thick principle, a principle that we, we can use to practice in all the principle. And this is from the, one of the Qawaid Al-Kubra, one of the major principles in the Sharia, the major uh, Qawaid Fiqiyya principles that the ulama are agree, in agreement of. Because there's many Qawaid Fiqiyya that the ulama do not agree upon. That according to a certain madhab, they uh, maybe take precedence to a particular uh, principle, but these is one. This is one of the Qawaid uh, al Kubra, meaning the five principles that are agreed upon, and th this is one of them, meaning that uh, uh, certainty is not removed by doubtfulness. So here, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi said, "لا ينصرف حتى يسمع صوت أو يجرى ريحاً." That the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "He said, do not leave your prayer." Uh, 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 Unless you smell something or you hear something. 
So that right there, the Prophet Sallallahu gave us the, the wabit or the criterion for breaking your Salat. If you've already started prayer and you're certain that you have tahara, you entered your prayer and you were on wudu. But then during your prayer, it, perhaps it could be the waswas, waswas of the shaitan. It could be the whispering of the shaitan that causes you to doubt your prayer. Am, is, my salat, am, am I, uh, is my salat valid? I don't know. I need to break my prayer. I think I broke my wudu. I think I passed gas. I think I did this. And so this, we won't know this. Uh, uh, so that means you are certain that you are in wudu. And now you have doubt about whether you broke your salat or not, whether you pass gas or not. The Prophet ﷺ gave us two duwabit here, two criterion. He said, do not leave the prayer unless you smell something. That's the first dabit, the first criterion. Or you hear something. That's the second dabit. Other than that, it's just waswas. So as long as you're not certain you did not break your wudu by uh, smelling something or hearing something, or you felt it very, you're 100% certain that you broke it, then do not leave the salat. Do not leave the prayer. And that is going to that qaida that because you are certain you are on wudu and you doubted about breaking your wudu. And that applies everything. Say you pray Salat al Dhuhr. I just prayed Dhuhr here, alhamdulillah. May Fadl Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah accept it. And may Allah accept all of our ibadah. And I was certain I was on, I, I, I prayed, for example, if during the prayer I was praying Salat al Dhuhr, and if I was during the prayer, if I have doubt about the rakah, say, if I'm not sure, is this my last rakah? Did I, is this the third rakah? Or is this the fourth one of dhuhr? Am, am I, should I make taslim? I don't remember. I, I got a little confused during the prayer, or what have you, I forgot. Or my mind drifted, or whatever. May Allah forgive us of our shortcomings. But say if this happens to you, you don't know whether it is your third or fourth rakah. The ulama say, which goes under this qaida, under this principle, yabna ala yaqeen, that you, 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 you uh, refer back to that which you are certain of. So if you're, you're not sure if it's the third one or the fourth one, you, that means you're 100% sure that it's at least the third one. So then that means you're on, uh, that you're, you should do the third one and then do the fourth one. You should complete the third and then do the fourth. You should not just pray your fourth rakah if you have doubt and in your salat. Because you're for sure that you're, you finish your third or you're on your third. For sure you're on your third, but you're, you have doubt if you're on your fourth. So you go to that which you have yaqeen, which you have certainty, and that is you're certain that you're on three rakat. Another example, if you are uh, it's time for prayer, and you're not sure if you have wudu or not. Or you remember passing gas, you remember you broke your wudu. You, so that means you're certain you have wudu, but you don't remember you have doubt about your purification. So there, what do you go to? You go to the certainty, which is that you broke your wudu. So you can apply this principle in fiqh to every, everything in the Sharia in order to be certain if you're making tawaf and you're not sure how many rounds you went around the Kaaba or whatever the or baina safa wal marwa and you're making sai so whatever the situation is you go, go back to that which you are certain of and you leave that which you are doubtful about some of the benefits we gain from this hadith and there are so many but we'll keep it brief the first thing is that we just mentioned al qaida am wa an al asl baqa ma kana ala ma kan ah this is another qaida in the sharia fiqh uh, principle in in uh, qaid fiqhia and this is that al asl baqa ma kana ala ma kan meaning that the asl of something the origin of something is that it is on what it originally was upon Meaning, for example, uh, in relation to this hadith, that 
the asl was is that the if it was Miqdad ibn Aswad or, who, uh, or whoever had the doubted about his prayer that or it was uh, wh whoever doubted about their prayer that the origin was that they were on Tahara they entered the prayer with uh, they were Tahur or I mean they were on Tahara and they doubted about their um, of whether they broke their their they broke the prayer or broke their wudu, so it goes back to what their origin was. Their origin was what they were on tahara. So al asl baqa ala ma kan. So that's a, another important sharia is that the asl is it, the origin is it stays upon what it, what it was upon. And that would be, for example, on water. If you think, uh, you know, it, it has applications related to the wudu and many things. Another benefit is it shows us this hadith is that when a person has doubt about a hadith, about whether they had an accident or whatever, that it does not break their wudu if they doubt about that. Why? Because they were certain they were on purification. Another benefit from this hadith, and this is very important, is the Shaykh says, Tahreem al insiraf min al salat li ghayr sabab bayin. That he said it is completely haram, it is impermissible. You will get a sin if you break your salat, you leave your salat without a, a legitimate reason. Okay? So you can't just break your salat, oh, the phone is ringing, break your salat, oh, uh, you know, whatever, but it needs to be a legitimate reason. So in the case of, if it's related to tahara, you have to be certain that you broke your tahara, not just playing around with it, oh, I have doubt, I'm a little nervous, I'm doubt. No, don't let the shaitan win you. And when you have this qaida, subhanallah, you can practice your religion on basira, because you know the principle. If whenever I have this issue, this issue comes with me and my personal prayer, or when I'm with someone else, alhamdulillah, I feel comfortable in my heart because I can always go back to the qaida that the Prophet Sallallahu gave us and that the ulama agree upon and the ulama are, have uh, ijma upon. They have consensus upon. And that makes your heart feel comfy. Because then you're like, you know that, hey, that doubtfulness does not remove certainty. I was certain of this, so I, doubtfulness is not going to mess that up. And if you doubted about your tahara, you doubted if you were on purification, then you go back to certainty, which means you didn't have uh, tahara. You were certain that you broke your wudu at such and such time, but you are doubtful, you can't remember if you made wudu or not, then that means you need to make wudu. So again, you can apply that principle. That principle can make your heart, it gives you ilm wa fiqh fi deen, that's ilm wa fiqh fi deen. Is that then you know that hey, you can be uncertainty about your, your, your tahara and your, your religion. And that's incredibly important. Another benefit we gain from this hadith is that when you pass gas, of course, during the salat, you have to break your, your, you've broken your wudu and you have to break salat. So you cannot continue, even out of embarrassment, you cannot continue because you don't want somebody else to know. No, you have to leave the salat. It is haram to continue. If you break your wudu, if you pass gas during the prayer, whether you're the imam, whether you're the ma'mum, whether you're the followers in the prayer, you have to uh, uh, leave the prayer. Otherwise, that is playing with the salat and the ulama have some very strong kalam. Even some of them say that the person is making fun of the religion. Possibly they've even left the religion because they're joking with the religion. So it shows us to be cautious of those things. At least, the, the least amount of thing we can do is be incredibly cautious about that and not... Uh, um, uh, play with that and instead if we know we pass gas during the prayer leave the prayer and make wudu and so forth so there are many other benefits from this hadith but this is uh, sufficient for us and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us all with al nafia nafia wa riskin tayyibah wa amalin mutaqabbilin and all of those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with may Allah bless us to
do those acts of ibadah that Allah loves and stay away from those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is displeased with. May Allah forgive us of our sins and may Allah bless the Muslims everywhere. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.